اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ علی سیدنا و نبینا اب القاسم المصطفی محمد و علی اہل بیته الاطیبین الانجبین بہم نتولا و من اعدائهم نتبرع الاللہ اللہم کل ولیک الحجت ابن الحسن صلواتک علیہ و علی آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك توعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد It is the day of uh, وفاة and demise of uh, ام المؤمنین حضرت خدیجہ سلام اللہ علیہ ان آن بہاف آف آل آف یو این ایوری ون پریزنٹ ان دس مجلس این آن بہاف آف آل آف دی مرحومین ان پرٹیکیولر دیز ا شورٹ زیارت آئل ریسائٹ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکی یا ام المؤمنین السلام علیکی یا زوجت سید المرسلین السلام علیہ یا ام فاطمت الزہراء سیدت نساء العالمین السلام علیہ یا اول المؤمنات السلام علیہ یا من انفقت مالها فی نصرت سید الانبیاء ونصرته مستطاعت ودافعت عنہ الاعداء السلام علیہ یا من سلم علیہ جبرائیل و بلغہ سلام من اللہ الجلیل فہنی ان لکی بما اولاک اللہ من فضل من و السلام علیہ و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ With reference to حضرت خدیجہ سلام اللہ علیہ studying the history of religions, we see the names of a few women who have reached the Kamul, who have reached perfection. One is Asiya, the daughter of Muzahim, Maryam, the daughter of Imran, Khadija, the daughter of Khuwailid, and Hazrat Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Now you have, have we, but we have heard very little about their role, the effects they had in history and in their societies. For example, Hazrat Khadija, Salamullahi alayha. Her title, it is Malikatul Arab. Her beauty, her wealth, her title, like uh, Sayyidatul Batha is another title that she has. But that what was famous was Malikatul Arab, meaning the queen of the Arabs. The Queen of Quraysh, where the title is given to her. Now all Shias and the Sunni historians, they have reported. And there was no dignitary of Quraysh who did not seek Khadija's hand to get married to her. Among them uh, is Utbah, Shayba, and Abu Jahl as well. They went to seek her hand to marry her, and she rejected all of them. Now when she got married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the women of Quraysh, they boycotted her. So she was isolated and all alone, being the queen of the Arabs, the richest woman there in Arabia. And there, his, uh, historians, they also mentioned this, that there wasn't any person who had not borrowed anything from Hazrat Khadija. She had helped everyone out. She had bailed so many out. And she had given loans and qars to so many numerous people across the Arabia. Now the name of Hazrat Khadija has been mentioned as the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, the mother. Now this is from the uh, Johanna's uh, Bible. Among the disciples of Prophet Isa alayhi salam, he says that her name 
has been mentioned as the wife of the Prophet and the mother of the lady who will carry the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head is a crown jeweled with 12 stars. Now this is something which he has reported in that Bible way before the birth of Rasulullah and Hazrat Zahra sallallahu alayhi Now she, regarding Hazrat Khadija, this is the statement. Now the false and the historical fabrication of the age of Hazrat Khadija at the time of her marriage is the work of Bani Umayyah because they did not want the qualities, the, the beauty of the Ahlul Bayt and Hazrat Khadija to be made public. Now these reports they were fabricated by Bani Umayyah to reduce the importance and the honor of Lady Khadija Salamullahi Alaiha. Ibn Asakir in his book Tariq Damishqi and Zahabi in his book uh, Seer Alam Nubala <coughs> and then Hakim Neshaburi in his book Mustadrak Ala Sahihain all of them they are the Sunni writers, Sunni sources and all of them have stated that she was 28 years old at the time of her marriage to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Bayhaqi, another Sunni uh, alim, in his book Dala'ilun Nububwa, he marks her age as 25 at the age of her marriage. And among the Shia ulama as well, Ja'far Murtaza Amidi, among the assets of the Shia world, in his book As Sahih Min Siratul Nabi Al Adam, he writes that in detail that her age was 25 at the time of her marriage. Now, her lofty status, the Prophet, the Prophet he reports that on the night of Mi'raj, the Jibreel السلام, had just one message for the earth. And that was the salam of Allah and salam to Khadija al-Kubra, salamullahi alayha. So in every phase of her life, the apostle, he lauds, he praises the greatness and the honor of Hazrat Khadija alayha salam. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, uh, says that uh, Islam, it got established and was formed by the hard work and the sword of Amirul Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam and the wealth of Khadija salamullahi alayha. Now the greatness of this great lady can be seen in the ziyarat waris that we recite. Ziyarat waris, it's one of those authentic ziyarat reported from by the Ma'asumeen. There we say that assalamu alaykum Assalamu alayka yabna Khadija al kubra And then when we come and talk about the next statement we say Ashadu annaka qad kunta fil aslaab al-shamikha wal arham al-mutahara That is we testify and give this witness that you have been among those who was pure a nur in your fathers all the way until Prophet Adam and a nur in the wombs of your mothers all the way until Hazrat Hawa. So Rasul uh, Imam Hussein from Hazrat Fatima, Hazrat Fatima from Hazrat Khadija, Khadija from her mother all the way to Hawa Salamullahi alayha says you are all nur. No pollution, no contamination whatsoever from the era of ignorance polluted you contaminated you. This is what we were witness. Now such a high status she has that the Prophet wasallam has said that she is one of the four ladies of the heaven. Now the fabrica fabricators of, the, of history, they have tried a lot to remove her name from history. The more we study history, it opens up further windows to her greatness and sanctity. Now this is first of all from the Bani Umayyah clan and also from the wives of the Prophet as well. There was a lot of jealousy uh, towards Hazrat Khadija Salamullahi alayha. That many a times, inshallah, we'll talk on that as well with some of the quotes. 
when Abu Abdullah al Hussein, 40 years after uh, after Rasulullah, when he moves to when he's traveling to Karbala, he comes to the grave of Hazrat Khadija, and there he offered a two rakat prayer, and he gives the two rakat hadiyah to Hazrat Khadija. There he cries a lot. There he addresses, saying, "Ya Ummah," cries a lot. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam as well, 10 years, 13 years, uh, that is, he lived for about 10, uh, 13 years after Hazrat Khadija. He lived, so in, he also used to come to the grave of Hazrat Khadija, there he used to cry as well. So Ahlul Bayt, they exalted her a lot. Rasulullah exalted her, honored her, her grave. Likewise, Abu Abdullah al Hussein also honors her grave just like the Prophet. And she was a partner in every aspect with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. That, uh, the Prophet says that no Prophet was hurt as I was. And in this, Hazrat Khadija also is a shareholder, is a partner with Rasulullah in all the, uh, the pain and the torture and the uh, harm that was given to Rasulullah, to her also it was the same. Although she was such a mighty lady with all that uh, uh, greatness and the wealth that she has, despite that, the people of that time, they hurt the Prophet, they abandoned her, and they also hurt her as well. Now, the statements that we have from Rasulullah regarding Hazrat Khadija, Salamullahi alayha, says the Almighty many a times, uh, by the presence of uh, Hazrat Khadija, he extends his pride to the angels that this is, uh, this is my servant, this is the lady who I am proud of. That is the, how Allah he boasts before the angels. Now the Prophet, he says that she had faith in me once everyone else denied me. She certified me once everyone else rejected me. She gave me her wealth when everyone else abstained me. And then through her, the Almighty Allah gave me uh, a child, and that is Hazrat Zahra. Now, the best woman of the, the women of the paradise, I just mentioned, one is Hazrat Khadija, the other is Fatima, the other is Maryam and Asiya bint Muzahim, these are the great ladies uh, that are of the heaven. And among the women of the world, only four of them, they reach this high rank of Takamul, and it is them. Hazrat Khadija was the first woman to have faith in God and his apostle. Yeah, awesome. Excuse me, brother. So Hazrat Khadija Salamullah Hazrat Khadija Salamullahi Alayha is one of the four great ladies that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he mentions uh, and also Rasulullah in numerous statements he has said and those four ladies who have reached that takamul and that perfection. Now Hazrat Khadija is the best and the most superior among the Ummahatul Mu'mineen. Ummahatul Mu'mineen, the mother of Mu'mineen, is the title given to the wives of the Prophet. Now, the Prophet, he never married anyone as long as Hazrat Khadija, salamullahi alayha, was alive. And Allah bestowed, uh, the Prophet, he says that Allah bestowed in me the, the love of Khadija, and I too loved her uh, from the core of my heart, and those who love Khadija also, I too love them indeed. The Almighty God, He never gave me a wife better than Khadija. The Almighty God has not replaced her rank with anyone. Now, all these are the statements that we have uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to, uh, regarding Hazrat Khadija. Now, one of the other statements that we have from the Prophet addressing to Aisha, he says that don't talk like that to Khad uh, about Khadija when she used to mock and say that she was an old lady, etc. Rasulullah, he used to tell him, don't talk like that regarding Khadija. She is the first one to submit to me and she blessed me with a child. 
and you all were deprived of that blessing. Now, regarding Hazrat Khadija Salamullah Alayha, whatever she had, uh, she gave away that in the way of Islam and for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. Zubair bin Bakr, he says that even in the era of Jahiliya, Khadija, she was chaste, she was trustworthy, she was wise, she had a vision, she had an insight. And Hisham bin Muhammad, he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, he loved her, consulted her. The first to have faith in the Prophet is uh, Hazrat Khadija, and he never took another wife as long as she was alive. And no child did he have but through her. Now this again that you hear that she was married and she had children from before, all that is fabrication. She was a virgin, she didn't marry anyone, she didn't have any children. Her only marriage was with Rasulullah and also the only child that she had is Hazrat Fatima. Salamullahi alayha. Now the rank of Hazrat Khadija in the A'raf also. Now in Surah Al-A'raf there is an ayah there the Almighty says that وَعَلَى الْأَعْرَافِ رِجَالٌ يَعْرِفُونَ كُلًّا بِسِيمَاهُمْ That is on the A'raf there are men that uh, you, who recognize everyone. So when Mu'mineen will be on the day of judgment in the Qiyamah, so those to whom the heaven is assigned, they know their way, they will be there. There will be some to whom the hell will be assigned, they also know their way. There will be a group who don't know that where they belong. Neither do their actions are such that they deserve the heaven with all the blessings in it, nor are they um, yeah, no other, uh, the, the wrong they have done is such that they deserve the hell. So for them, what happens is that Allah, he places them in the A'raf. A'raf is a holding area between the hell and the heaven on the day of judgment. On that holding area, there are heights, A'raf. And on the heights, there are men who will look at this crowd down below. Now this A'raf, it's between the hell and the heaven. So these play, this group will be placed here and they are hoping to get into the heaven. Hoping to get into the heaven also, there need, they needs a recognition. A recognition that those on the heights on the A'raf, they are the Ahlul Bayt and the Imams alayhim as -salam. Now this is very briefly I'm mentioning over here and among them, the A'raf, Hazrat Khadija, Salamullahi alayha, is also there. So they have to have a recognition for that group who is in the A'raf. So if they know and recognize them, they will enter. And if they don't, if either of them doesn't recognize either of them, they cannot enter. So recognition to enter into the heaven is required from both sides. So that wilayat of Amirul Mu'mineen, if it's there in them, then Amirul Mu'mineen can also recognize them. They have the wilayah, they can enter. If that wilayah is lacking, they don't enter. So if the actions are such that neither the heaven can be given to them, nor the hell can be given to them, they are placed in that holding area. So among those A'raf who have got the capacity and the ability to bail people out from the, that holding area, it's Hazrat Khadija Salamullahi alayha. Now the first among the mu'min, uh, among the ladies who entered uh, Islam and I was faithful to Rasulullah is Hazrat Khadija. Is yadkhuluna fi deen Allahi afwaja. The first one there it was Hazrat Khadija from among the women. Now a very honorable lady and from a very honorable tribe, a very wealthy businessman she was and then businesswoman she was and the richest tycoon of her time. And historians, they say, they have described her wealth to be as as, much, as many as 80,000 camels she owned. She took people in partnership and in trade and was an international, on an international levels, import, export of good. And she was a very successful uh, businesswoman. She was the mother of the orphans. That was another title that was given to her, that she looked after the destitute and the needy. She had the desire to marry Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Abu Talib alayhi salam was a poor man, but great and very 
highly respected among the tribes. He saw that his nephew Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has reached the age of uh, getting married and then uh, he cannot uh, marry him to anyone. But little he could do. There Hazrat Abu Talib says that if there is anyone you know you want, let me know. He says but I haven't got anything to give to that uh, spouse. He proposed like every other person uh, who worked for Khadija, she, you also serve her in her business. He offered her, her him Rasulullah a job with Hazrat Khadija and with the profit that you will get, we can make some arrangements for you to get married. The Prophet accepted uh, the offer of working for Hazrat Khadija salamullahi alayha and Hazrat Khadija who knew the Prophet, his trustworthiness, his character, his abilities uh, and she somehow long wanted the Prophet to join her trade. She accepted and the wage uh, that was accepted to pay the Prophet for his work was two or four camels. The Prophet along with the other caravans was set, uh, sent to Sham Syria. Now the reporter here, uh, Hazrat Khadija, she sends one of his uh, slaves with the Prophet to be in a company with him and then says unconditionally you have to obey him, respect him, whatever he says, wherever he, he, whatever he wants to do, you will have to uh, obey uh, the Prophet unconditionally. So the name of that, uh, the, the, the slave that she sends is Maisara. So Khadija, she sent her personal slave Maisara with the Prophet with all those special orders. Wherever he stopped, it was all barakah, it was all blessings that they got in abundance and the caravan returned with a big hefty profit uh, compared to the previous years. And the historians, they report that when this caravan reached Sham uh, or Basra, one of the monks there, he, and his name is Nastura, he sees a cloud sheltering upon the caravan and upon the Prophet. He calls Maisara and says, who, who is there in that group, in that caravan of yours? Uh, who wasn't there with you in the previous trips? And uh, the monk, uh, he knew and that's why he inquired. The, the signs that he saw, the cloud sheltering the caravan and also then he sees that the Prophet, he goes and rests down under a tree. And there when he inquires and he says that definitely he is a Prophet. Because no person sat under that tree but a Prophet and he is a Prophet. He is a prophet. So he was the first person to say that and Maisara wanted somehow to get to his destination to Mecca and give this message to Hazrat Khadija. And on his way back, he counts and sees that the profit they have uh, gained this uh, in this trip, it's huge. And again, in addition to that, Nastura, the, the monk, the good news that he had <coughs> given, Maisara, he reaches uh, the destination and Hazrat Khadija also sees that there's a cloud sheltering and shadowing over this caravan. When Maisara comes and gives the news about the monk and the prophet, and the prophet they had gained, uh, the in this business, in this trade, she says that I want you to take him to different parts of Mecca. Just want to see if the cloud follows the Prophet or not. She sees that the cloud is following wherever he goes. It wouldn't leave him. The desire to marry the Prophet on Hazrat Khadija increased and it intensifies. And then uh, Hazrat Khadija, she freed this Maisara for this good news that he gave and all the Prophet that he brought. Uh, with him after this uh, trip and uh, she has the desire to marry Hazrat Khadija uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. She approaches, approaches uh, the Waraqa bin Nawfal and one of the dignitaries of Quraysh and then she asks and proposes to get married to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that he accepted. And the aqd, the nikah, was recited by Hazrat Abu Talib alayhi salam. And the mahar also that was specified for this marriage was uh, uh, 500 dirhams uh, or 20 camels. That was the mahar that was uh, set by Abu Talib 
alayhi salatu was salam. Now all this beauty and all that she had, Hazrat Khadija, she sacrificed all of that for the Prophet. On an occasion when he, when the Prophet comes to Hazrat Khadija and says that, uh, well the Prophet, he couldn't say that uh, he was in need of funds. But somehow she understood that he is in need of funds. She, she instructs the slaves and the maids to bring whatever is in the in the, the storage or whatever that place was, uh, the bags of gold and silver to place before the Prophet. And the Prophet also was shy. She just uh, says to those uh, maids and slaves to just keep on piling them. Whatever he wants, he can have. Whatever he wants, he can take. Says so much she brought and so much she placed before the Prophet that they couldn't see one another. There was a big wall of all these bags of gold and silver coins that were placed before the Prophet that she sacrificed everything for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Now regarding the beauty of the sacrifice and giving and that is uh, Jude and Sakha, we've got these two terms. Jude means giving, sacrifice, uh, Sakhawat, um, giving out of love. And before someone asks for what he wants, these are two terms, Jude and Sakha, that a person he gives in one case, when someone asks. On another occasion, before that person asks, he gives. So these qualities were there in Hazrat Khadija. One of the ayat of Quran that we see, which gives us so much of an insight and teaches us that yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim wa la yajiduna fi sudurihim haja. This is from Surah Al-Hashr, ayah number 9. There it says that among the qualities of the mu'mineen is that um, they <coughs> and among the qualities of the mu'mineen is that and in the faith before them love those, they love those who have fled to them. And they do not find in their hearts a need of what they are given and prefer them. Before themselves, though poverty may afflict them. So they may be in need, but then before them, the person says something, they give away. Now these talks about the generosity can be seen in Medina quite a lot when they supported the Muslims when they moved from Mecca. So when they came from Mecca to Medina, Muslims were very poor. They didn't have anything. So it was the people of Medina who supported the people, the, the Muslims who have come to Mecca. So the Muhajir, the Ansar, they shared their belongings with the Muhajirin. They gave superiority to them. Even the war booty, the Ghanaim that they got, they never took it for themselves. They gave it to the Muhajirin, the, the immigrants who have come. So they preferred the immigrants or the outsiders, they preferred their, their guests more than them, over themselves. So this beauty uh, was uh, never seen in history before, nor after that, that Allah, he reveals an ayah, that these people, they are such, um, uh, so, such selfless and such giving and generous that they don't even look uh, into their own self, although they need it. Now the renowned Mufassirin, such say that, this beauty was never seen in history of mankind that although they were in need, they gave away out of love all that they had. Some riwayat say that the number of Muhajireen serving were less than the Ansar. As a result, there was a dispute among the, among the Ansar as well. They, they wanted to compete in helping the, uh, the Muhajireen. Uh, the Ansar, there was a dispute among them. So it was the beauty in the Ansar that the Almighty liked it, he praised it and this ayah was revealed. So giving, it's one of those beautiful actions and traits. In Islam, it is by giving a person grows. Even the wealth, it grows by giving. In the capitalistic or the materialistic system of faith and belief, they think that by giving, uh, wealth decreases. Here it's the other way around. If someone wants his, an increase in his wealth, in his income, barakah, homes has to be given. 
zakat has to be given, sadaqat have to be given. So all these charities and alms and dues and funds and all that we have, that is in a way protection of the wealth and also protection of health and also increase in that wealth. Because for Khums Ma'asum, he says that you, when you pay that 20% of your saving, we guarantee that 17 folds of whatever you have paid will return to you. Not only that 20%, 20 multiplied by 17, that much is going to come back to you. The same thing is with zakat. Otherwise, when khums and zakat are not given that wealth, it just goes away. Somehow it is lost. First, and a wealth in which khums and zakat haven't been paid, it is haram to, to use it because it's contaminated with haram because that khums hasn't been paid. It is unlawful even for the person who is uh, who says it's mine, uh, he cannot even use it. So khums is paid, zakat is paid to purify that wealth for you to be able to use it lawfully and also it returns in many folds when a person pays those khums and zakat. The other ayah that we have in Quran that talks about this generosity and giving is that وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا and they give food out of love for him to the poor and the orphans and the captive. So reported from both the schools of thought, that is both the Shias and the Sunnis, that Allama Amini in Al-Ghadir, he says 34 from the most famous Sunni ulama have reported this incident that this surah was revealed in the honor of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Ahlul Bayt of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The Almighty, he such liked this benevolent giving trait of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam that he has an address special as, he addresses them, the Ahlul Bayt, as the special servants, as the Abrar, as the noble, the righteous, the good. So, وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ Out of love, they give away to those, the orphan who is in need, the beggar who is in need, and the captive who was in need. Now here the captive also, it isn't, and the, the captives there, it was from the, not even a Muslim. So they give away uh, selflessly, gener generously for them, and Allah also liked that trait. And for that also he revealed a complete surah in honor of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhim salam So this giving is important, and in giving also we have to uh, see that if it is given for the sake of God and that is with ikhlas there a lot will return in the dua that we had for this day we said Allahumma habib ilayya fihi al-ihsan that Allah in this month make me love goodness and ihsan wa karrih ilayya fihi al-fusuqa wal isyan and make me dislike corruption and disobedience وَحَرِّمْ عَلَيَّ فِيهِ السَّخَطَ وَالنِّيرَانِ Bami from anger and from the fire by your help, O helper of those who seek help. So in this dua also, we see that we ask Allah that this giving trait, it's one of those uh, beautiful traits that every one of us has to have. And infaq is وَأَنْفِقُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ In the way of Allah, you have to give. You have to give. And that giving also, if it is for God, Allah, there it carries weight. Allah accepts and he also will give a lot of barakah to you here and in the hereafter. So giving is important. Now that we all have to give, if it is giving for Allah, it has that positive effect. If God forbid it is to show and it is for riya purposes that others they see, here the Almighty also will not accept. He says, you did it for someone else, go ask that someone else to give you the reward. You did not do it for me. If it was for me, I will reward. The example of those, the parable of those who give away and who spend in the way of Allah for the sake of Allah to seek His pleasure and contentment, they have a high and a lofty position. بَلَا مَنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ وَهُوَ مُحْسِنْ فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ Says that someone who was faithful and who gave away قُرْبَةً إِلَى اللَّهِ for the sake of Allah and he was good 
فَلَهُ أَجْرُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ The reward he would get is with, God, with Allah, the Almighty. What is it? The reward is with him. At the same time, he says, وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ No fear they have to have. And لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And they will not be in grief also in the Akhirah. So if you want that grief to be put away in the Akhirah, we have to give. With this generosity, with this giving, it is a, it is a protection for you, your wealth, your descendants, your family, your loved ones. All of this a lesson to myself. So in Islam, we have to give. Places of worship are the only points of contact that we have here from this part of the world to the shrines of the Ahlul Bayt. If I intend to be in Karbala, I have no other choice. I go to the center that is near my place. That will take me to Karbala. That will take me to Mashhad. That will take me to Mecca. That will take me to Medina. So that is one representation that we have, these places of worship, wherever we are, especially far away from the Muslim lands, that place of worship has that beautiful impact and successful and prosperous. And lucky are those people, those families who have a center uh, near them, whatever they want, religiously, spiritually, they can get connected to their center and they can get connected to the shrines and to the Ma'asumin alayhim as -salam. And those people who don't have these centers, when you look at them and how uh, the outcome of their actions and amal, how they have distance from uh, deen also, it's a result for not having that center. So centers are mubarak, centers are important. And we have to support them. And a center that supports uh, religion and teaches and preaches the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, that definitely is what Allah Jalla wa Allah, He also has a special eye on them. And in Allah, you hibbul muhsinin. And Allah, He definitely loves those who are good and muhsin. May Allah Jalla wa Allah help us understand these beautiful sayings of Ma'asumin alayhim as -salam, And by Hazrat Khadija salamullahi alayha, this great lady who sacrificed everything for Allah Taala in the last years of his of her life in the Shaykh Abi Talib, she was there for Muslims were there for three years, and it was the wealth of Hazrat Khadija that was helping them to suffice to to survive therein. Now, in the last days of her life, it was the month of Ramadan, where her health deteriorated, and this rich and that wealthy Khadija, she doesn't have anything left. Now she calls Hazrat Fatima on the last day of her life. Says, I'm shy to say this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I have a little wish. And that is, I'm afraid of the grave and the questioning in the grave. Now someone who has sacrificed everything in her existence for Rasulullah. She says that I'm afraid of the grave and the questioning in the grave. My request is that to comfort me, ask your father to give her, to place that, to wrap me in that aba in which he got his first wahi from, from Allah. Wa Hazrat Zahra, she's five years of age here. She comes and delivers the message to the father. And when Hazrat Khadija passes away, there wasn't a shroud also to shroud her. So she, that, uh, that uh, aba and the cloak of Rasulullah was to be wrapped around her. Allah Taala from the heavens, from He sends a kafan for Hazrat Khadija. Says someone who sacrificed everything for me, it is upon me that I provide all the shroud and everything for her. That was provided by Allah, and according to her request, also that Aba was placed on. She was wrapped in the Aba of Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wa wasallam, in which. He got his first wahi. Ala 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 to Allah, ala al qawm al zalimeen, wa sayyalamu al nazina, walamu ayyam al qalabin, yan qalabun. Ya Allah, by Hazrat Khadija, salamullahi alayha, this trait of generosity and giving, bless every one of us with that. Ya Allah, between us, Quran and Ahlul Bayt, never ever come across a moment of separation. All those who are ill and ailing, especially present in this majlis, Allah grant them shifa. 
all those who have requested for du'as, whatever du'a they may be having, Ilahi, by this Friday, the day of Imam al-Asr, alayhi salatu wassalam, grant whatever they want. Hasten in the return of our Imam, our Master, our Hujjah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.